I'm Samantha Gross. I spent a decade as a writer and editor for the Associated Press. And now I'm the founder and editor-in-chief of Story Tour, an in-person magazine that's bringing its audience offline, away from the computer and out into the real world to experience stories firsthand. Now, for years as a journalist, I got to go out and meet all kinds of fascinating people and speak with them. And it was my favorite part of my job. And it was often a really moving experience. And then I would head back to the office and I would try to type up a story that could convey to my readers what it had been like to be there. But I could never fully get across what it was like to speak to teenage hunger strikers on the steps of the Florida State Capitol or sit down on a bar stool next to a World Trade Center construction worker and hear about his pride and what he had built. But really, why shouldn't our audience get to experience it all for themselves? And that's what StoryTour is doing. Now, instead of opening a magazine, our audience can actually walk into one. And when I say walk into, I mean actually physically get out of their chairs, walk out the door, and walk to meet with the storyteller. I have to clarify that because in our all-digital world, people often just don't believe me when I tell them this is offline, but it is. <laughs> now, for these on-the-scene experiences, our audience can choose between our fiction section and our non-fiction section. In our fiction section, a storyteller meets with a small group and brings them on a tour of a totally made-up tale adding a new layer of narrative onto the fabric of the city. In our nonfiction section, a storyteller meets with a small group and brings them directly to the scene of a story. So for example, instead of reading about the connection between home and food for the immigrant residents of Jackson Heights, our audience can actually walk into the kitchen there, meet with the residents and the workers, hear their story, hear them interviewed, even taste their food. Now, we work with our contributors in a similar way to a traditional publication. They pitch us stories, and then an editor works with them to shape the narrative experience for the audience. We already have tours in the works on topics as diverse as the religious communities of Crown Heights and the Irish music scene in Midtown. Our business section takes a different approach. This really replaces the broken, often boring conference experience that so many of us have where we just get a lecture. Instead, we create an evening of storytelling where passionate professionals take the stage and share true stories from their own work lives, sharing their expertise that way. We select the storytellers and help them shape their narrative to make it a really enjoyable evening for everybody. And so far, we've heard that people have a great time. It's the perfect networking experience. This all comes at a time of tremendous interest in live storytelling. Organizations like The Moth are holding events all around the country, frequently selling out. The podcast that The Moth has is downloaded more than one million times each month. Out in San Francisco, Pop-Up Magazine sells out 2,700 seat theaters in a matter of minutes. They've reached almost mythic proportions. Everyone wants to know who got a ticket. And we're going to enter this market and serve that audience which is just clamoring for more. And we're going to offer them something new, inviting them out into the streets of their city to explore their surroundings and their world in a new way. So this summer, we're moving into the Made in New York Media Center in Dumbo, into their incubator program. And there, we're going to be growing out our core offering of New York City tours. And we're doing this in a profit-sharing model, spl splitting revenue between us and our storytellers. From there, we expect to expand, both geographically and into a variety of other revenue streams. We're going to have our business section at conferences, universities, and through branded events. And we're also going to create, not, uh, sorry, to create storytelling events for nonprofits and cultural institutions. And we'll be partnering with publishers of every kind, whether they're digital or book publishers or print. And that's because we're serving not just our, our audience, but also our storytellers and the publications they work for. Right now, all of them are looking for new ways to engage with their audience, and we can help them do that. So there are people here who can help us, and we hope you'll do that. Uh, we're looking for Sorry. <laughs> um, we're looking for contributors, for press coverage, and for advice. Now, we're already working with some wonderful contributors, including people who have written for Narratively and other publications like the New York Times. And they're great, and we want to connect with more people like them who are interested in, ex in exploring this new format. We're also looking for press coverage. After 10 years in the news business, I know we're a good story. We're right in the middle of a trend in in-person storytelling, but we're also offering something completely new. So please let us know if you have any suggestions in that regard. And we hope you'll come join us. Let's make engagement not a virtual term. Let's do it for real. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Samantha, in terms, of, in terms of possibly helping, so have you heard of SideTour? There were a, a New York 
uh, yes, Techstars great. NYC program graduate like two years ago. Mm -hmm. They were just acquired by Groupon this past year. So their concept and yours are similar in that it, it's this idea of an offline experience. It's very bespoke. It's, it's extremely scarce. And there's a clear <laughs> revenue model there. Um, I, I happen to know the founder there, so yeah. potentially that, that might be something. I'd love to speak like with them. I've been but my other question that relates to that is I, I thought of the moth immediately when you started your presentation, and I, I, like, I walk by the Housing Works bookstore um, when they have those events, and it's like lines of people around the block. And my hypothesis there is that there's this sense of like a marketplace where anybody, any one of those thousand people can be the storyteller for that night. And I, I think that's what makes it so popular. Like, what are the dynamics for story tour that make, that will potentially replicate that type of popularity? Sure, so the one thing I'll mention about the moth is that that's true of their smaller events where people put in their names and hope to get called on to tell a story. And their larger scale events at Cooper Union, gigantic audience are just sold out early and those are pre-selected storytellers no one's help, hoping to get up on stage. And we did a lot of market research with the audience there. And what they told us is that the reason they love those stories is when they hear, hear those storytellers, they recognize a little piece of their own experience in someone different. And that's exactly what we offer also, um, that shared human experience. Do you know anyone at the Moth? Because you should be partnering with them. I absolutely Reach hope to, to and uh, I, that's our next step on okay. our list. Yeah. Reach out to me for that. Interview. That's great, thank you. Um, hi, Samantha. I really um, enjoyed listening to your presentation. It's clear. I, I like your style a lot, and I thought that was great. Um, my question is really fundamental. I have to admit, I don't get how it works. I don't understand if I'm either a writer or a visitor to your site. I don't get it. Sure, and thanks for asking that, because it, it, it actually comes up again, and it's one of these things that because we're so used to the digital experience and hearing about engagement digitally, this is just a, a it, I'm glad you asked. Um, Basically, this works in some ways similar to a tourism tour. You go to a site, you have an array of stories, you purchase a ticket, and then you go and meet with the storyteller at the location you've been given in a small group format. You follow them around from location to location. Ha in other words, when I go to the site and yes. I read something and I think, wow, that's cool, I would love to meet this person, is this different for me as a user than signing up for an event? In other words, is it say, you know, come here, Samantha, you know, June 12th, Brooklyn, 2 p.m. In other words, what am I seeing there? I'm not sure well, I even get What do you get, get at the I, website how itself? How do I engage with these events? Sure, so we're uh, addressing that and we're taking uh, video and other multimedia of the events to, try to communicate to our audience a sense of what they're gonna be getting. And this will also eventually allow us to create media that can be lead to sponsored tours and so on. Um, so there will be media on the site, but primarily at this stage, although I hope to eventually build out the site further, at this stage it is primarily an in-person event. We've already had no problem selling tickets through Eventbrite and others, not through our site primarily, but because there's such an active culture of listings for events for entertainment in New York City. Sure, uh, let me just go back to, these are our revenue projections. Um, and Thus far, you're talking about? Yes, so so far we've been running beta events and we've been intentionally lowering the price level on that because we've wanted to primarily get audience. We don't yet have word of mouth on our side. Uh, we've been charging about $10 a ticket and um, we've sol we sold out our uh, beta tour and, we, and our business section event packed the room here. Uh, yes, sorry, uh, 12, no, because for, for a small group event to be heard on the streets of New York properly, you really cap out about 12 to 15. So we capped it at 12 at the beginning, and we sold that out quite quickly. Um, I wanted to ask, I'm actually very interested in this because I do a lot of this at Bloomberg, <coughs> and so I'd love to chat with you. Um, but one of the things that is interesting to me is um, the talent issue, because at the Moth, for example, not everybody's an Adam Gopnik in mm -hmm. terms of actual presence, and that's an actually a very interesting challenge is how do you discover who is engaging in that format? Because it's very different, as you know, being a journalist. A lot of uh, journalists just don't like speaking and aren't particularly compelling at it. It is somewhat self-selecting. The people who have spoken, we've spoken to some journalists already who have said, oh, this sounds fascinating. I would love to come. I don't want to be speaking in front of an audience. But there are others who, often just by talking to them, you can get a sense of how gregarious they are, how able to reach out. and um, and. I'm working with them as an editor to help make sure that they can create a sort of performative experience for the audience. Samantha? 
Okay. Um, I'll, be, I'll be quick. The one thing I would just encourage you to think about is when I look at I like the core concept, the way your business would work, though, it feels like you've thrown out a fairly diverse set of offerings, which I think in the long term is a really good thing, but in the short term kind of worries me because it feels like it's not quite focused yet. So you talked about sort of the, the corporate style events, which I totally buy that, and that's the, the tour group events targeting local people, but they could also target visitors to the city. There's a, there's a, and I could see you kind of reaching them through partnerships and other types of means. So it feels like there's a lot of different ways to go. So I would just kind of encourage to think about a roadmap strategy where you, you kind of focus on one or two things at first, perfect those and build out from there and, and think, you know, hard as you shape it, the rationale behind why you starting, why you would start with what you would start with. Um, trying to do all things right off the bat feels like it's not going to be sustainable. Thank you, and we are planning on really focusing on the small scale tours at first because that's what really sets us apart and is our core value. Okay, well, Smith, I, I agree. I, I really like the style of your presentation because it was reflective in many ways of your product. It was very sort of narrative focused. But one thing I would suggest, this slide, for example, went by so fast that I had no idea by the time I got done exactly how you proposed to make money at this and how that would work. So my suggestion to you and to, to others as well is that it's sometimes helpful to, to print out a one sheet thing of facts, or revenue facts and audience and stuff that you can hand out and that way you kind of obviate a lot of the questions that you're getting now. Thank you. Um, so uh, I really enjoyed your presentation. Uh, I love the fact that you, you, the way you actually present the story is almost proof that you're able to do your business, uh, which is great. Um, I guess the key thing, I'm struggling to find issues, and um, one of the things I find, say, if you look at Y-Plan, it's always these alternative tours of which sell out the fastest. So um, particularly with the impulse market, this, is, this sounds like it could be really interesting. Um, the only thing I'm, I'm scared of is it's, there's very, very, very low barriers to entry to what you're doing. Uh, people can set themselves up very easily uh, in the same way that you're finding it quite, quite easy to set up. Um, how do you think you, how do you intend to actually create barriers to entry? How are you going to, you know, stop, other, uh, how are you going to make sure that your tours are the ones that people choose? I, I think we're helped by being the first doing this and also by my connections within the media industry. I know a lot of reporters, I know a lot of storytellers and um, I, I have a unique set of skills. I was a tour guide once upon a time and uh, was a journalist and was a creative writing major, so I've, I've, I've worked a, in, in all these corners, and so I, I, I believe that that and, that and the timing will set us up.